the study actually it was a uh, Rebecca Kaiser did when she was the uh, leading the Office of Strategic Formulation at headquarters. I think is, was very very useful, and this is where they uh, went and did a NAFCOM model for the Falcon One and Falcon Nine, and came up with a number of just shy of four billion dollars uh, when. We knew from a number of other sources that SpaceX had spent under four hundred million, and uh, I mean that's that report is I think online, but I think it's very instructive. How could we be that far off uh, over a factor of ten? And and by the way, everyone finds that just unbelievable. I found that unbelievable when I first heard it, but th it, the facts are there, and it really has to do with again the incentives, the the business model that you're using. Um, I think a, a lot of of padding that his through you know years of of operation kind of gotten into the model and cost testing models tend to only go one way you know they don't get more expensive over time they seldom get cheaper over time at least for space products and i think nafcom has kind of fallen into that and uh, so whatever price nafcom gave you that was like the bot that was the lowest price <laughs> you were expecting for that project my guess is that in most cases you'd find actual projects were performed would exceed their NAFCOM price. You know, that would probably be the normal tendency. And uh, so having, it, I think that study was, was very useful to see, okay, there are ways to do this much cheaper, but under the right circumstances. Again, you have to have the right environment where you have essentially a, a commercial entity that has enough capability and of a startup type mentality that would, they're willing to, to take this on. And uh, so... Um, not everything would would lend itself to you know to uh, what SpaceX has done, but I think there are a number of things that could, and I guess the the thought that uh, a number of us have had, including Rebecca, is that well, if you can identify those projects, okay, and if you can manage to get you know significant cost reduction in certain areas, well, that in theory would free up money to do other things that you want to do. So it would allow you to advance your portfolio of projects. Rather than you know having to really you know starve you know the, the the things you are currently running because the resources are 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 too small compared to the the requirements of the project so but I think that's a, a very useful study. My guess it'd be interesting to look at other things like now the um, the blue origins vehicle the new shepherd okay what did what did Jeff spend, you know, developing that? And do it. You can do the same thing. You can do a NAFCOM model. Okay, what what did he spend versus what would we have guessed he would have spent with standard business practices? And see, can you get some more data? We did have one other case I should mention that was run. Um, this is back in 2009, uh, where we were looking at SpaceHab. Uh, SpaceHab also uh, came in and did more of a you know entrepreneurial approach for putting in place the. Uh, Space Hab logistics module that flew on the shuttle. We found a factor of eight savings there. Okay, so it, same, you know, kind of same ballpark that Rebecca uh, found uh, for SpaceX. So that gave us some, some confidence. Okay, this isn't just a fluke at SpaceX. This is, again, this is a real phenomena if the right circumstances prevail where you can get a, a private money and a more of a startup approach to take on a project. Um, but it would be interesting, again, Blue Origin would be a good example now. Uh, maybe see at ULA and see you know, what, what they may see relative to their cost structure uh, for the things that they want to pursue. So you know, they're kind of in this transition uh, mode and see if, if uh, my guess is that they're hoping for a number of cost savings, but we'll see if that materializes or not. 